nothing like a moment of panic. Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm here to talk about another vintage cookbook. This time I'm talking about fun to cookbook. I don't know about you, but that title is very difficult for me to say. It's kind of, it just doesn't flow well for me. I want it to be the fun to cookbook. It's fun to cookbook. It Fun to cookbook. It just seems a little odd. This book was published in 1955 and guess what? We have another Carnation Milk Cookbook. Why am I following up Teen Time Cooking, which was the first Carnation cookbook that I covered with Fun to Cookbook, <laughs> which is another Carnation Milk Cookbook. There's something pretty interesting about this book. If you watched my last video, you know that I'm very invested in the mystery, mystery of Mary Blake. Mary Blake supposedly wrote Teen Time Cooking and I'm just not sure she's a real person. When you open up the inside cover of this book, you'll see a little girl writing a letter. Hi, when I teased mother to let me cook, she looked in the bookstores for a cookbook for me. Some books had too many long words. Some books were too babyish and just had play recipes. Mother has written lots of cookbooks. She's Mary Blake. <laughs> and probably your mother has some of her books that tell how good carnation evaporated milk is for cooking. So mother decided to write a cookbook especially for me and other girls my age. Now we can have fun really cooking. I thought up the name Fun to Cookbook. Sorry for criticizing a child's cookbook title. I know you'll have fun too. Love from Margie Blake. So we've got Margie Blake, daughter of possibly fake person Mary Blake, writing a little welcome intro to her cookbook. I've already said, and you can probably already tell, I love vintage cookbooks, but I have a really special place in my heart for vintage cookbooks that are for children. Probably started when I was really young. Um, I was cooking from, I think it was like a Betty Crocker's children's cookbook from the 70s. I'll probably cover that one in the future because I have my original copy. I just think they're a lot of fun. It takes me back to when I was learning how to cook when I was a kid. There are often some pretty interesting recipes. Sometimes you end up cooking them for years and years and they become a family favorite. I am impressed with this book, to be honest. This book does focus more on the fun of cooking than it does preparation for running your household in the future. This book is for eight or nine year olds, so I would be really concerned if it was if the focus was actually let's run a household soon. This book progresses in a really fun way too. It kind of takes you through Margie Blake and her cooking journey. We start out with my first day in the kitchen and it covers some basic tools, different types of knives, measuring spoons, the different types of measuring cups, learning how to clean up the kitchen, safety rules, all super important things to learn. Important things that are stated in a way that doesn't say you're gonna be a wife someday. It's a little bit more open-ended than some of the cookbooks that I have covered previously. This book is a little bit different than some of the others in the way that it teaches you how to cook. It focuses a little bit more on basic formulas, I guess you could call them. It's not so much like each individual recipe as much as it is, here's how to cook vegetables in general. Here's how to make a cheese sauce that you can then use to put on top of the vegetables or make macaroni and cheese from. It's sort of more focused on building blocks than it is individual recipes. For example, there's a section called everybody likes sandwiches. Instead of being like, here's how do you make a ham sandwich? It's here's how you make sandwiches in general. Get your bread together, put it on a cutting board, spread it with butter, um, and then it goes over some possible fillings. And it's, it's not like, here is each individual filling. It's like, okay, you could take some mayonnaise, some chopped celery, not if you're making the sandwich for me, please. Then add like chicken or tuna or whatever, like whatever you have in the fridge, make a spread out of it and then put it on the bread. I really like how they do this. There's another section in this book about one dish meals, so casseroles. You know I'm not afraid of a casserole. Here it is, one dish dinners. So it explains what a casserole is and, and then it teaches you how 
to make a cream sauce. So typically I think today people often use like a cream of mushroom or a cream of chicken soup. At this time, it was probably more common to use a cream sauce as your base and then you could season it however you wanted. So basically it kind of shows the formula for what you mix together to make this casserole. Chopped leftover roast meats, so chicken, beef, what have you, um, a cooked vegetable, some macaroni or rice, and then your cream sauce. And then you mix it together and bake it in the oven with a topping. So that's pretty great to me, honestly. Uh, it, it teaches you how to use up maybe some leftover items in your fridge. It really gives the opportunity to have a little bit of creativity in the kitchen. I think it's just a great skill to learn and I'm super impressed that it was in this book and being taught to eight and nine year old children. Another thing I really like about this book, there's only one gelatin salad in it and it is not a savory gelatin. Five Minute Fudge appears in both this book and Teen Time Cooking. It makes me wonder if Five Minute Fudge appeared in a lot of other carnation cookbooks. It's very similar to like a simple fudge that I've made. One of my favorite illustrations in this entire book is this. I dreamed I was in dessert land. It sounds heavenly if you ask me. <laughs> and this is also the section that I want to prepare a recipe from. What I'm going to be cooking today, orange pie. So I've seen this recipe or something very similar to this recipe floating around forever. My mom used to pick up a Family Circle or Women's Day magazine at the grocery store when we were shopping. And I feel like every year, especially around springtime or Easter, there would be this recipe, something very close to it. The basic idea is mixing a fruit flavored gelatin with a whipped cream or a whipped topping and then putting it in a graham cracker crust. The recipes that I've seen for this in recent years have used uh, like a frozen non-dairy whipped topping. I was interested in this because it uses whipped carnation. What you do is you take a cup of carnation milk, you freeze it for a certain period of time, and then you whip it. I'm very interested in trying this. I've not really tried anything like this before. It uses a graham cracker pie crust, which they teach you how to make previously in the book, and then the whipped carnation, which is another thing that they teach you in another section of the book. So it's like taking these things that you have already learned and incorporating them into a recipe. Something in the sandwich section of the cookbook that I really liked and something that I do myself, packing the lettuce separately from the sandwich. That's something I've done for a long time because I don't like it to get soggy. And they tell you to do that right here. I didn't even know that that was that was something <laughs> in this book. Just to go into the illustrations in this book a little bit more because they are so adorable. They are, as my grandma would say, just darling. We have this recipe for supper cocoa. I don't know what supper cocoa means. It doesn't look like anything that makes it specifically for dinner. There's a section on fudge sauce. Very cute illustration, which I, I'm assuming it's like a sister and brother making ice cream sundaes this illustration with the little dog. Oh, I love it. Mom and dad were going out, so they let her make supper. Let her make supper. Her sister was there. She had a babysitter. It's fine. I don't have a lot of snarky things to say about this. I've wanted to make one of these no bake pies for a really long time, so I'm excited to try this. I feel like this could be a really good springtime dessert, and it seems pretty simple. People probably have some of these items, if not all of these items on hand in their pantry already. I hope it turns out well. I'm a little bit apprehensive about the whipped carnation. I could see myself messing that up somehow. <laughs> Let's get started. I've gathered everything that I need to make this recipe right here. The first thing that I'm going to start with is making the whipped carnation. It's kind of a separate recipe, and in order to make the whipped carnation, I have to pour the milk into a pan and then freeze it for at least 20 minutes. I made my graham cracker crust last night and let it sit in the fridge overnight. That was another part of this recipe that needed a little bit more chilling time because the pie itself needs to chill for at least two hours 
In this book, it says two hours. I've looked at some other more modern recipes and it's set up to four hours. So we're just going to put it in the fridge and chill it and just keep checking on it. I had a little bit of milk left from my last recipe. So I went ahead and put that in the measuring cup. And then we're gonna add enough carnation evaporated milk to make a full cup. So I'll go ahead and shake that up as it says to do on the top. In order to make the whipped carnation, you have to start with one cup of evaporated milk, which you then pour into a shallow pan. It said a refrigerator pan in the book. I think substituting this aluminum cake pan will hopefully work. So I'm going to put that in the freezer now. That really didn't look like enough milk to produce three cups of whipped topping, but I guess we'll find out. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to start with zesting my orange. I already washed this. You wanna make sure before you use any kind of citrus rind that you wash it off. So we need a teaspoon of this. I'm gonna go ahead and start um, zesting it now onto this cutting board. I was surprised to see citrus zest in a children's recipe. I don't think that's something I ever encountered in anything that I cooked. Advanced maneuvers, smells awesome. Let's see how much we have. Wow, not even close. We need a whole teaspoon of this. I've seen people do it this way, like the way that I'm doing it now. I've also seen people do it this way, so see what that looks like. It feels a little bit more awkward. I'm just not used to it. <laughs> Compelling content. <laughs> we have almost a teaspoon, so I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> My fingers are permanently orange. Mix orange gelatin dessert, sugar, and orange rind together in a small bowl. I have a small bowl right here. I was a little surprised to see that there's sugar in this because I feel like the gelatin is already kind of sweet and then you're adding orange juice later, also pretty sweet. Sugar and the orange rind together. It smells amazing. Can you see? That's what it's looking like right now. So next, I have to heat the orange juice because it requires one cup of hot orange juice, which is not something I say very often hot orange juice does not sound great, but in this case, we need it to be hot in order to dissolve the gelatin. I'm going to juice what's left of my orange first to see how far we get, and then I'll top it off with some bottled juice. Looks like we got about a quarter of a cup, so I'll go ahead and top that off now. There's nothing quite like the smell of hot orange juice. I've got my hot orange juice. I'm gonna pour that over the gelatin sugar an orange rind and stir until it's dissolved. This recipe needs a lot of fridge time, I will say that. So it's 20 minutes for the carnation milk to cool off in the freezer before we whip it. Uh, it's 20 minutes in the fridge for this. So if you do plan to make this recipe, make sure that you allot enough time. Kind of smells like a melted orange popsicle. You're not quite as excited about this one, are you, Dottie? It doesn't have any beef in it. I'm going to pop this in the fridge for the 20 minutes that it needs. In the meantime, the carnation milk should be ready to whip, so I will do that next. I've just realized that I keep saying carnation milk instead of evaporated milk. You don't have to use carnation brand evaporated milk for this. You can use store brand, you can use whatever. I feel like reading these books has made me part of their ad campaign somehow. My timer for the milk just went off, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a look in the freezer. <gasps> Oh my God. <laughs> well, everything kind of leaned to one side when I put it in there. So it's all trapped at this end. I think that's what it's supposed to look like. So here we go. <laughs> Whew. My hands are really cold from this. Oh, I hope this works. I'm struggling. It wouldn't be one of my videos without a little bit of struggle. Okay, no, 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 no. We're gonna, we're gonna try something else here. This does not look correct. Yeah, this is a little better. I'm getting it scraped, it's fine. I'm not making this for an actual party or anything. I made no promises to feed this to anyone, so if it doesn't work, it's okay. I thought for sure I would have to leave this in the freezer for more than 20 minutes, but I'm thinking maybe it should have been a little less. <laughs> I'm supposed to add a little bit of lemon juice to this after I start whipping it. I don't know if that is for flavor or if it's something to do with like stabilizing it, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I do that and not skip that step. Will these even fit in here? I used my lemon juicer for my orange and I'm trying to use my lime juicer for my lemon. Let's see what I get out of these. Oh wow, I'm, I'm doing great. Am I actually hitting the measuring cup? Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, okay, that is almost two. Okay, I'm happy with that. 
I will be using a hand mixer today. I'm just gonna come out and face facts. I don't have the egg beater, which is this thing that I tried to act out in my last video. And that's what they say to use. So I don't have an egg beater. This is my modern day egg beater. Here we go. After this begins to stiffen up, that's when you add the lemon juice. And I'm surprisingly, you know, it's thickening up. So let's add our lemon juice and see what happens. This is working and I'm really surprised. <laughs> I kind of can't believe it. It says to whip until very stiff. It doesn't say how long that takes, but I think we're getting there. Look at that. Color me surprised. We are still recording, right? Because I would hate to miss this moment. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's possible to overmix this, but I really don't want to do that. And I think, I think we might be there. Yeah, like I can even hold it and it's really not moving very much. I'm going to see if the gelatin mixture is ready. What I'm afraid of is if the gelatin mixture is still like slightly warm, it might ruin this whole thing that I just did by melting it. So let me take a look. Okay, it's still a little toasty. Like it's not bad. This is supposed to be in the fridge for eight more minutes. I'm kind of thinking of putting it in the freezer just for a little bit. I don't want to mess anything up, but I also kind of want to speed things up here. <laughs> Feeling impatient. Okay, let's put it in the freezer. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, I just tasted a little bit. <laughs> if you're using it as a whipped topping for something, you're supposed to sweeten it. But since it's going into some already sweet ingredients with this pie, you just leave it as it is. So basically right now we have milk and lemon juice and it definitely tastes like milk and lemon juice. My timer for the jello mixture has just gone off. I pulled this out of the fridge and it seems that it is fine. So that is good for me. I'm gonna pull the gelatin mixture out of the freezer and make sure that it is ready to go. Okay, I think that feels pretty good. It's not completely set, but you can see where it's starting to gel a little bit. And I think that's the texture that we're going for. Moving on, mix the whipped carnation with the gelatin. Obviously this is not going to fit into this. So I brought out another bowl. So let's put this in here. It says to mix with a wooden spoon, but I'm gonna use a spatula because I'm a rebel. Actually, I just think it's gonna work a little bit better. <laughs> I think spatula technology has perhaps come a long way since this book was published. Please work. Mary Blake says it's gonna work, so it must work, right? <laughs> I believe in you, Mary. I think I wanna be a little gentle with this. I don't know, I'm still super afraid that this is just gonna deflate on me and we're gonna have a bowl of liquid. I mean, it does kind of seem like it's deflating, so now I'm really nervous. My hope is that once I pour this into the graham cracker crust that it will set up really nicely. It's pretty soft right now. It smells really good, like an orange creamsicle. It seems like this is all incorporated. I don't see any more like orange liquid seeping in. But before I put this in the pie crust, I have to taste it. Ooh, <laughs> that is really sweet, really tart. Definitely tastes kind of like an orange pop ice. That's what it reminds me of. I'm gonna grab my, my graham cracker crust. Truth be told, next time if I do make this again, I'm just gonna buy one at the store. I somehow ended up making a gigantic mess with this. Yeah, just buy one. I don't think things like this existed in 1955. Otherwise, they probably would have told you to buy one in the book too. My only cute pie plate that I own is this Pyrex one, and it is oddly shallow. I actually started trying to make this crust in here, and I just had so much leftover crumbs. I mean, it would not work. There would have been just full of crumbs with no room for the actual filling. So right now we're just gonna deal with a regular disposable <laughs> aluminum pie pan. Here we go. I don't know if this is gonna fit in here. I might have to make some individual little dessert cups. Okay, let's smooth that off a little bit and then see where we land. Oh, that is generous. I'm afraid if I add more, it's just gonna completely run off the top. Were pie pans just wildly different back then? We can do a little bit more. Eh. 
I am not confident. Uh, let's try it. Oh, oh, nope, 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 nope. Oh gosh. That's like on the verge of collapse. So we'll put this in the fridge. I will just scrape the rest of this into a little dish and we can eat it like that by itself. I think I'm gonna use this pie dish just to stabilize this a little bit. The, the disposable pie tins are a little flappy and flimsy. So here's what we got. I don't wanna tip it because it will just completely run onto the counter. I'm going to put this in the fridge for at least two hours and then we'll come back and see how it is. Okay, well, thanks to some camera weirdness, I recorded an entire segment where I showed you the completed pie and tasted it, and it's not here anymore. It completely disappeared. I will taste this again. <laughs> um, but here's the pie. I, as you can see, I've cut a slice out of it. This texture of it is kind of spongy, like the filling of a marshmallow egg. That's what I think. It's not like a campfire marshmallow but it's not quite like a thick, like a cheesecake or anything either. The taste of it is very sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the graham cracker crust kind of helps cut the sweetness just a little bit because it's graham crackers are not quite as sweet, but the filling just kind of like melts and disintegrates in your mouth a little bit. I think you could use pretty much any flavor of gelatin that you would like. I used orange, of course, but I think lime or strawberry would also be really good. This seems like a really easy springtime, Easter time, maybe even like summer dessert. This one in particular tastes a lot like an orange creamsicle, so if that's your thing, you would probably really like this pie. If you didn't wanna use a pie crust for whatever reason, you could just dish up the filling in, in little dishes or custard cups and serve it that way and people would be completely happy with it. I think this one might be a keeper. I am very surprised, <laughs> to be honest, that it worked out. I, for some reason, just didn't think that it would. It's good. It's really good. We did it. We cooked a recipe from Fun to Cookbook. Do you have this book? Did you learn to cook from this book? I would love to know. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, to follow my little food experiments. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.